Boss Man Show, a new coach at ETSU Buccaneers out of Southern Conference, Coach Jason Shea on the Boss Man Show. Coach Shea, man, how's it feel, man? You've been on the job almost eight days here. It's the head man. How's it feel? <laughs> well, thanks for having me. It's exciting, uh, but but I'm, I'm trying to get out of this spin cycle that I've been in. It's a whirlwind, just hit the ground running and, uh, you know, trying to reconnect with our players and, and hire staff, but uh, humbled and blessed and grateful to be given this opportunity with a program that has high expectations. Most definitely, Coach. You know, it has said a lot about you that the – administration university decided to tap you as the head man because you know you was you was a coach Ford's right hand man you've been here all, all those years with coach Ford's when he was in juco coaching and tennessee as well so the fact that you know he moves on to a better position and now you're here to, to keep keep the train rolling man it's make you feel really good they thought hey coach shake keep this train rolling the way it's been going the last five years here yeah i think you know i'm gonna provide some support stability and some continuity in in this uncertain time that we're in uh i've had my fingerprints all over the program um you know i get i gave a lot of suggestions to uh, coach forbes he, he allowed me to to do a lot of things and do what i do best now i get to to make those decisions and so you know looking forward to that and, and continuing our success most definitely and continuity doing, doing this you know, unstable times, you know, you just really don't know uh, how things are going to change from, from day to day because I can uh, say this to you. Um, I interviewed Coach Forbes on uh, March 12th, right? Uh, and I was, I was mm-hmm. in Nashville, it's SEC tournament. Now, that morning we talked, we thought we was going to have some basketball in Nashville. Then I get to the arena, it's all canceled. So just think – just from two months ago talking to Coach Forbes to now how much things are changing in the world, and now for you and being the head coach there at TSU now, just trying to keep these young men stable now because they need somebody who, who they know and trust, not somebody new from the outside that they don't know and we're not be able to have the Zoom, FaceTime, and you know all those different things we do now to communicate. It has to be good knowing to have somebody they, they know and trust that can help them through this tough time here. Yeah. And, you know, and that's what I've tried to, in my press conference, I made the analogy, you know, Coach Forbes and I went to the same culinary school. So we're we're, we're good chefs, and, and the, the dish is going to look the same, but mine's going to taste a little different with the spices that I put in it because, you know, I'm not Coach Forbes. Uh, I'm Jason Shea, and we're going to do things a little differently. But for the most part, the standards, the expectations, the core values, they're going to be the same moving forward so there's not much of a transition uh, and learning curve that our guys will have to do in a time that there's so much you know uncertainty when we're going to come back when we're going to be allowed to be on campus uh what that's going to look like are we going to go to class or is it still going to be online and and then all the guidelines that uh, your state governors are putting on you or the NCAA or your conference or your university president, you know, there's a, there's a lot of factors and to have some continuity uh, just is going to help moving forward. Now for you, coach, um, how, how did you prepare yourself? I know you mentioned Coach Forbes gave responsibilities uh, as, as associate coach here, uh, his right-hand man. So how did you prepare all these years to become a head coach? Because uh, I know when I was a co-host, before I became a main, the main show host, I was thinking in my head how I would do things. So how did you prepare yourself to become a – for the opportunity when it kind of opportunity itself to be the, the head coach now, to be a head coach anywhere, how did you prepare yourself? Well, I think the first thing was even when I was with – Coach Pearl at, you know, I was with Coach Pearl for 10 years. I was with him at UW-Milwaukee, then Tennessee, and then Steve came on staff. And I just tried to do the best job that I could do where my feet were and in the responsibilities that were given to me. And I tried to become elite. And, uh, you know, I'm a good tactician or strategist. became a good X's and O guys, uh, both Coach Pearl uh, Coach Forbes, even Brian Jones, when I went up to North Dakota for two years, they entrusted me a lot in, in uh, helping them during game with in-game adjustments, helping with play calls or helping with defensive um, adjustments. And, and then from there, I just tried to 
learn from them. What have they done? What has worked in the past with them that, that I would like to implement or what I would change from what they have done um, to make it better and just to making mental notes. But first I tried to, you know, take my role serious and be a star in my role, uh, you know, to get to this position. Most definitely, and that another thing we went on to those coaches, Coach Brian Jones, or Steve Forbes, Bruce Pearl, is you learn how to build a program, a sustain a program. So I feel like ETS, you made a great choice in you because you've been around three men who know how to build and sustain a program from top to bottom over years, over many years. Yeah, you know, and uh, Coach Pearl and Coach Forbes, they're they're both big personalities. That not it's not necessarily me but i do think they did a great job of connecting with the fans everywhere they've been and that's important to uh have that connection to create that pride within your community within your fan base um because it it can be a huge advantage when you're at home and then when you travel you you know you can just uh make people uh, in awe of what you have and so just getting out there and reconnecting and um, with our fan base and trying to be in front of them as much as possible. You know, that's important. That, that's a big part of um, being, being a successful program. When I was with coach Pearl, our attendance numbers through, through the roof at UW Milwaukee, we were ranked fourth in attendance uh, five of the six years at Tennessee and the nation. And then here at ETSU, Coach Forbes, we've been, uh, we've led the league in uh, attendance every year. So, um, you know, I think that's all important. Yeah, you guys have a great home court advantage up there, man. Uh, I know Mercer came up there and got you, I think, this year, but really you all don't mm-hmm. lose at home at all, you know. So, I mean, talk about for our people who might not have heard about your program and how you guys play up there in John City. Talk about the environment of home games on ES- ETSU game days. Well, they're awesome. We our, our arena seats uh, 6,200, and uh, we average a little over 5,000. We we've, we've had uh, a dozen sellouts in the five years that we've been here. Um, you, you know, it, it's big time. That they they're passionate about the Bucks, and they show up in droves. Our, our conference tournament is in Asheville, and. Uh, we call that Freedom Hall South. Freedom Hall is where we play here in Johnson City, and and we'll have five or six thousand in in another arena that only seats about sixty five hundred, and sell that out during the conference tournament. But you know, philosophy wise, we're we're going to continue to play, um, play the game the right way, with discipline, um, and, and tough, physical, hard nosed defense. We're going to attack offensively and and put the defense on their heels. We're going to move the ball, share it. Um, we're going to have that first to the floor mentality, give great effort. Um, because I think if you have to teach effort, then, then it's hard to win. And, and, um, you know, so that, that's what we're going to continue to look like. Those are going to be the staples of our program and what we've done. And that's the way, you know, I've, I've learned under the coaches that I have, have coached under. Now, Coach Shea, a lot of people don't know, realize this, but ETS, she was the winningest school in the state the last five years in Tennessee. A lot of people might not realize that, but that's how much winning you guys have done over the last five years up there. Yeah, we won 130 games in five years, so that's 26 wins a year. And uh, that's pretty good uh, sustainability right there. And, uh, you know, we, we have started to br- build a national brand. People – they recognize the ETSU. Uh, you know, I was talking to uh, guys that were from our first team, and, and before we got here, they, they would go home to wherever they're from, and, and people would ask me, ETSU, what's that? And they tell them East Tennessee State, and they said, is that Division One?" And then, uh, you know, and then the change, and now people see them, oh, ETSU, East Tennessee State, right? And he's like, yeah, you guys are nice. So, you know, we're, we're building that national brand and have some recognition, and, and that's uh, it's awesome to, to see and be a part of. And, Coach, just for the listeners down here who may not know about it, I'll try to tell them that your imprint in ETSU was pretty much you have a good 
radius to go. You can go, you can go south to Atlanta, north up to Cincinnati, or Louis, uh, Indianapolis, Louisville, east to Charlotte. There, you know, west. If you want to go far across the day to Memphis, even down to Birmingham, like what you located where you can get to a lot of places in within a five six hour drive. If you save it, because the eighties love to save on the budget and you know have to save those plane sure. miles there. So. Sure. You, the way you look at you, you, you can drive pretty quickly and see the different players on a different given night when you're not playing a game. So talk about your recruiting imprint and how you're going to attack recruiting and attack the regional area around you guys to bring in quality talent to keep this train going you guys have up here at ETSU. Sure. We're, we're, we're going to continue to cast a, a national net, but the Southeast is important. I think kids growing up, and I know myself, they, they enjoy playing in front of family and friends, and they love to, you know, there's some pride to to play close to home so that they can come see them. And so we're going to continue to do that. We're going to, re- we're going to use every resource possible. We've always uh, recruited and had a blueprint of we're going to recruit the best uh, players that we can get. And that could be high school. That could be junior college. That could be transfers. It could be grad transfers. We're going to piece together a team with the best possible players. And we've been able to do that in the past. And that's going to look like we're going to be versatile. We're going to be able, you know, we can have a lot of different combinations out there. We can play traditional, big, big. We can play four guards in a, in a big, or we can play small and have five guards out there. We, we did that this past year. Uh, we're going to be long. We're going to be athletic. We're going to be deep. I think the, our success has been predicated a lot on our, our depth, we don't fall off. We we have starters sitting on the bench, but you know that also builds uh, competition in practice. And sometimes our practices are more competitive than the games because guys are fighting for uh, minutes and their spot. And, and it, that's how you develop when you are constantly on edge and, and have to bring your A game. And uh, lastly, you know, we, we, we've always had experience. And those things help in March um, to make deep runs in the NCAA tournament. Most definitely, especially when you and I are in a 1B league as well. The SoCon is no, those quality basketball in the league. Uh, seven of ten schools this year was 500 or better. But, you know, it's always been like – Unfortunately, it's been a one big league, you know, it's, it's unfortunate, but people sleep on the conference because Chattanooga's gotten better, Mercer's getting better, of course. You got UNC, uh, Greensboro up there as well, you yeah. know. <laughs> you know, you got all these uh, – uh, Furman's always good with Bob Ritchie. So, you know, you, you always got this competition from so calm from top, top to bottom. So, about the league has actually gotten better from, from the bottom teams. has gotten much better as well uh, on what you expect going forward the league, all the tough coaches and tough teams coming up in this next year here. Well – you know, our, our it starts with our leadership, and Jim Shouse just became our uh, commissioner, and he's got a vision, and he's helping. You know, we we are on the verge uh, of being a multi bid league. You know, too, we Greensboro was on the verge last year, uh, Furman and ourselves were, and then this year, you know, we, we, if we didn't win the conference tournament, I think we would have had a great chance to be in a large bid being a team that would have been, you know, 29 and five at the time we ended up 30 and four because we did win it all, but we've got great coaches and they challenge you each and every night um, to think and then communicate with your players on, on a game plan, but you don't want to over uh, clutter their mind with so much stuff because, you know, they're, Coaches are good, and they're going to challenge you. So you want your guys to play freely, but uh, they're going to be put in some some bad positions, and you got to just trust that you you've taught them well, and your principles are good, and, and you can cover uh, most of this stuff. And they may get you, and you just got to tip your hat to them and say congratulations, and go on to the next play. But but our league is is super strong, especially when you look at the wins that our conference has had against. Uh, the Power Five teams, um, you know, we went out there and had some, some huge wins. We, we went on the road this past year and, and beat LSU on the road uh, in, by double digits. And we, we were – we played Kansas. We were down five with six minutes to go. So we gave ourselves a chance. And our league is, is just continuing to get better and better each year. 
and that's one guy for a coach non-conference scheduling wise. I know you have to play play some guaranteed games, raise money for the university, but beyond those games, uh, how you see yourself going about scheduling for, for your team this year would be a tough schedule, challenge your guys before for for, for conference play, of course, or play a non-zip a, 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 a tournament as well, and uh, or you just try to take, take some guys home as well, get guys, guys close to back to home, see if they can get see their family, see them play or one time in, in their Bucks on uh, Navy and go over there. Yeah, uh, you know we're going to schedule tough uh, as always. We want to challenge ourselves. I think doing that in the preseason allows you uh, get get you prepared for the, uh, a tough conference season. And so we're always going to uh, schedule uh, with that mindset that uh, we want to be challenged, but we also think we can go and win those games. And, uh, you know, if we have the opportunity to take one of our players back closer to home so that they can have a bunch of people come and, and represent them from where their hometown or their family, uh, you always want to do that because I think that's something special and something those kids, you know, look forward to. And uh, it's just a nice gesture. But, yeah, we're going to uh, – scheduling is always difficult when you're one of the better mid-major teams in the country. It's hard to schedule. We, we've always it's, – it's taken us a long time, the last several years, to finish our schedule. Um, but we, you know, we, we work through that every day. That's, it's almost like uh, recruiting and uh, try to try to get our schedule done as fast as possible. But it is a challenge. Yes, and with Coach Shea, thank you for your time today. Congrats on the new gig. I'm going to help talk to you again down the road. Uh, more, more opportunity to talk to you as well as your team's going, going on the road here and play uh, and get these things done for you. Your, your bucks, man, good luck to you. I know you do a great job up there, man. Well, I appreciate you Any Anytime, I'd love to be on there and, and talk some basketball, talk hoops, talk whatever. But uh, – Enjoyed your time, and, and hopefully we can do it in the near future. And go by. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed, Coach. Have a good Be safe, man. Thank you. All right. Thank you. For all your photo, video, and voiceover needs, check out the fine folks at Blu-ray Productions. They will take good care of you. If you don't believe me, you can see for yourself. Check out their work at BlueberryProductions.tv, the Facebook page, Blueberry Productions, also a Vimeo page, a YouTube page, and it's Blueberry, B-L-U-B-E-R-R-Y, Prod on Twitter. Check them out today. Blueberry Productions, great people, great work, great service. Hey there, your yard took a real beating this summer. Luckily, Scott's Turf Builder Winter Guard has your back. Just feed your grass with Scott's again this fall when the air is cool and the soil is warm. It's the perfect time to give your lawn a boost. If you do, Winter Guard will give your yard the nourishment it needs to help weak, thin grass recover and support root growth, giving you a greener, more resilient lawn both now and next spring. Guaranteed. Grab a bag of Scott's Turf Builder Winter Guard today. You'll be back to barbecuing in no time. This is a Scott's Yard. Hey parents, we all try to be extra careful with our children in the car, but then we get an important call or text. Remember, our children are watching. Make every drive a good example. Be in the zone. Turn off your phone. Visit childrenshospital.vanderbilt.org slash BITZ to learn more about our teen driver safety program. Brought to you by Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt, the Ford Motor Company Fund, and the Allstate Foundation. Hello, my name is Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academics.com and athleticsconsulting.com. Once again, www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach T Wheel 24 or Instagram Travis L. Williams 24. Or you can call me at 404 542 607. Once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Bossman Radio Show, covering sports and entertainment across the country. 
Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you. Hip hop fans, I got a great album for you. The debut album from Family Grind ENT, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, illstreetrex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody, Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today. True Speech and 313 Fresh, Family Grind ENT. Believe in it, get it. A gorgeous tan from Suntan City gives you an inner glow that relights the fire when you run into your first crush. Vicky, who is that? An old boyfriend. Lucky you just tanned at Suntan City. Lucky he's single. We're doing lunch tomorrow. Won't be single for long then. During Tour of the City, try all five tans, including spray tan, for just $4.99. Restrictions may apply. Click to buy now. When you're a teen, you finally get to make some of your own decisions. Who are you going to hang out with? What do you want to be? Are you going to glance at that text while driving? Remember, a split second is all it takes for something tragic to happen. Be in the zone. Turn off your phone. Visit childrenshospital.vanderbilt.org slash BITZ to learn more about our teen driver safety program. Brought to you by Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt, the Ford Motor Company Fund, and the Allstate Foundation. It's maybe the night that my dreams might let me know All the stars are closer, all the stars are closer Tell me what you gonna do to me Confrontation ain't nothing new to me You could bring a bullet, bring a sword, bring a morgue But you can't bring the truth to me Alexa, play Kendrick Lamar and SZA Okay With Amazon Music, a voice is all you need Get tens of millions of songs. Download the Amazon Music app today. Yeah, yeah, it's your man, JC, the host with the most, baby. And it goes down each and every Saturday night right here in the city of Memphis. That's right, y'all. It goes down at Clicks Sports Bar Memphis, baby. 3705 Malco Way, Memphis, Tennessee, 38125. Come out and join us, the Three Kings, each and every Saturday night for the liveest karaoke in the city. Everybody gets in free till 10 p.m., only five dollars after great food we got drink specials we got all kind of games man we got the pool tables popping whatever you want we got you man come on out have a good time with us each and every saturday night that's clicks sports bar memphis fall down the boss man show time for my man Jesse Smith, host of the official S Fuck podcast. Uh, catch it on Zoom. Have also a YouTube channel as well. Check it out. They bringing it to you. JC, Brandon, Stacy, and Lee. They giving it to you. JC, brother, what's good, my man? What up? What up? What's going on, bro? Man, not much, man. Enjoying a nice spring day in the ATL, man. Uh, I think summertime is right around the corner. I think the weather's finally broke for good now, bro. Yeah, it, it appears so, man. You know, it's a nice day here in Memphis also, man. We're in the 80s. So, uh, yeah, I think summertime is just right around the corner, man. Bro, uh, I, we watched the last dance, episode 7 and 8, um, kind of right in our childhood there, brother, with that one right there, bro. Um, what are your thoughts on episode 7 and 8, man? It kind of give us a little like uh, your highlights of what you saw on Sunday, Sunday, Sunday night there. Man, hey, you know, I've been loving uh the whole documentary, man, each and every episode I've, I've recorded and have gone back and watched several times, man, just to relive all those old memories and moments and to find out some things that I never even knew. When I thought that I was, you know, the most avid, uh, you know, person that knew everything about the Bulls and Jordan at that time, for, but there were still some things that I didn't even know about, man. But just when to go back as far as episode seven and eight, it pretty much covered, um, the last uh, championship, uh, with la- the, the the last of the, of the first three feet from that time, from about '93 to about '96, um, after Jordan decided to step, you know, step down and go play baseball, and Scottie Pippen uh, ascended to be the head honcho on the team, and the great season he had that um, that first year after Michael Jordan, he averaged 22 points almost. Eight rebounds, six assists uh, during that season when he, he could have very well been MVP. 
Um, and then also the moment where he uh, did not want to go into the game uh, against the Knicks. Uh, I guess it was game three, I believe. Um, game three or game four, man, where, where Tony Kukoc ended three. up hitting, hitting the game shot. Yeah. Ended up hitting the game winning shot. And uh, and Sky decided to stay on the bench, man, and how that's always going to be a stain on, on his uh, on his great career. And then Jordan eventually coming back, you know, with the four or five uh, and, and getting knocked out by your uh, – your your old Orlando Magic back in the day, bro. So, yeah, like I said, seven and eight, man. I can't wait. I, I don't want it to end, man. I wish there was some more episodes, you know, after nine ten uh, this weekend, man. I'm not ready for it to end, but you know, I'm, I'm sure the uh, final two episodes are going to be, you know, even even greater, man. So I'm looking forward to that, bro. I was actually I had some some PTSD from when I was like. <laughs> <laughs> 89 years old, man. The eight-year-old year was a good year because we beat the Chicago Bulls and then beat the Pacers in seven games and then Nick Anderson happened in the, in the finals <laughs> and it, it broke my heart. <laughs> it did. Man, what? Yeah, <laughs> then in man. 96, the sweep, I was there, unfortunately. And it's bad when you have Anthony Bonner out there with John Konikak trying to deal with the Bulls because <laughs> Horace Grant's uh, arm was injured. I have not forgot that, man. And Brian Shaw had back spasms. Right? That series against the Bulls, man, everything went sour, that series. I mean, and so, yeah, having relived that, knowing how I felt as a younger kid when the Bulls destroyed my magic after we beat them the year prior, which I know why now because Jordan wasn't himself that year. He was still in a baseball body. I'm being with the Birmingham Barons. So, now, it kind of sprung this question, JC. Had baseball not went on strike, would Jordan have just kept up with the MLB? Yeah, man. You know, Mike had the, uh, he still had the baseball body. He didn't have the conditioning yet. You got, you know, you got tired out in that, in that Orlando series. But, man, did he come back with a vengeance that following year? You knew. You knew Mike was out for blood, man. To sweep to, to, to sweep a team with Shaq and 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 Penny like that, man. I think Horace Horace got hurt in that series, I believe. He but, got hurt in game one. Yeah, but still, man. You know, Mike was on a mission, man. I remember watching it on TNT, <laughs> sitting yeah. in the living room with my dad watching it on TNT. I remember, no doubt. And, and in game, and, and but get this, in game two. The Magic were up by 18 in the third I quarter. Remember. I remember, bro. And they went on that run, and that was it. Yeah. There was it's, no looking back after that. Yeah. And I feel like the Magic had the PTSD from the Houston series. Because think about it. Every game against Houston, the Magic was up, was up every game in, in the third quarter. Right. Every right. game they was up in the third quarter. And got swept by, got swept by the Rockets, which caused Shaq to go to L.A., and Brian, he would be fired, and then they all set off all those chain of events. with the Magic just was, they'll get a, have have a good start, and they'll lose them. Hey, shout uh, out to Nick Anderson, man. <laughs> yes, Nick Anderson calls it all. Yes, he did. <laughs> hey, the Magic to me is still chasing, bro. The, the uniforms, though, the best ones was the original ones. They're still chasing. Right. right. Just just go back to it, please. I know what you mean. Just quit chasing. Yeah. Go back to it. You know, so, yeah, man, uh, the lad dance has been good. And what about Gary Payton saying, so he told George Carl, and, hey, I'm guarding Michael Jordan. We're down 3-0. Do you think had they put Payton on MJ earlier, that would have made a difference in your mind? Yes and no. I'm going to say yes as far as the aspect. Gary Payton's actually telling the truth. He, the way that he was playing Michael, the way that he was, you know, bodying him, you know, and trying to, and, and trying to deny him, you know, position there, it did it did have a little effect on Michael. If you go back and, and look at some of those games, I think the only really great game that Michael had in that series was game three when they went their first game in Seattle. But all the other games, Michael shot well under, you know, his norm, his average from the field. And in the, in the, uh, in the, well, the clinching game six, I believe Mike had a horrible, <laughs> a horrible shooting percentage, man. You know, I was watching the game, we uh, re- watched it the other night. 
yeah, man, he was horrible from the field, but just made it up on the free throw line. So Gary was telling the truth that maybe if he, if they would put him on earlier, you know, they, he would he put, could possibly tire Mike out a little bit. However, Mike being Mike being the savvy, the savvy uh, veteran, the savvy you know player who knows how to score from anywhere, you know, and knows how to get his points, he was still going to get buckets regardless. It was just a fact of how much, how much uh, pressure and and as far as how much that Gary Payton, you know, could could deny position on him. Because Gary did a good job, you know. Yeah, but Mike is going to get his points because when you're when you're that great. When you're the great player of all time, you're going to get points regardless. You're going to find a way to score. Gary, have, you know, it's conditioning and just taking the toll as far as maybe trying to tire him out late in the game where others may have had to step up, you know, to, to help out as opposed to Mike kind of carrying the load like y'all always used to. No doubt. And also, we're interested in B.J. Armstrong uh, supposedly – Woken up the sleeping giant by celebrating the game two win the Hornets had against the Bulls at the Iron Center, and the Hornets got pretty much a gentleman sweep four one. But Michael Jordan says the B.J. Armstrong should have known better, and his trash talk set set, 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 set them off pretty much and got them to get the Hornets out of there real fast. Yeah, man, you don't you don't poke the beast, man. Do not poke the bear. Let him let him sleep. You know, but. I just can't knock BJ, man. You know, it's all you. Of course, you know you're not going to beat the Bulls. You're not going to beat Mike in the series. But just one game, one moment, you know, BJ was pulling himself. But hey, then you woke him up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then it's over with after that. No doubt. And let's uh, <laughs> transition this. The NBA had a, had a call on Tuesday and a vote amongst the players where. Since uh, seven percent of the players want to play, but a lot of players on bad teams don't don't want to play still, and the NBA trying to find a way to get this season in and still play eighty two games next year. Um, they don't want to take testing away away from the people, and there's mm-hmm. really no plan of if somebody gets the virus, what happens. So, what are your thoughts? on the NBA trying to find a way back and still probably play 80, 82 games next season. But looks to me like the time, if you're trying to do 82 next year, time's running, running out already. Yeah, man. Um, like I said, though, this virus that's throwing monkey wrench and everything across the board when it comes to sports. So, uh, and, and at this point, boss, I mean, I don't – it doesn't really it, – it's strange to say, it doesn't really bother me if the NBA – does it come back? You know, is, is, that, is that weird to say? Like, I'm not really. If they come back, cool. If not, I understand. I understand also. Because for them to come back and finish the season up, you're gonna be playing well into possibly what August, August, and maybe September. Right, right. And I and I hate. I, I just hate the schedule being thrown off like that. Where you know, I know everybody said, "Well, the season should start," you know, around Christmas anyway. No. The season should always start. To me, the season should always start around Halloween. That was always when you knew the NBA season was about to start. Halloween, mm-hmm. uh, first couple of days of November. I don't want the season to start <laughs> around Christmas or New Year's, man. I hate that it's throwing everything off. But if you told me that, hey, we can guarantee the season will start at the same time, but we can't come back and finish this season, I'll be okay with that. I'll be okay with starting the 2020-2021 season around the same time, like we do every year, as opposed to starting in December and have it, it, it just for us to be able to finish this season. I'm against that, man, because at this point, the, whoever wins the championship is going to have an asterisk on it anyway. You know, it's going to be an asterisk there, you know, whoever wins this year. So, mm-hmm. yeah, man, I'm not even – I'm not concerned with that. It sucks for guys like LeBron as far as his legacy. Let's say if they don't finish the season out, you know, but – yeah, I don't want to see a season with asses on it anymore, man. I'm fine with it over too. And I guess mine's more selfish reasons. In fact, that hey, I have asthma. I, I can't go back anyway and cover the team without a vaccine. Right. So it's kind of a selfish reason for me. Why, if I hope it don't come back, you know, I don't want to be. I, I don't want to be put in a spot where I have to say, hey, I ain't coming back because of my health. Right. And then, then lose exactly. my position. So for me, it's selfish why I don't want him to come back, but. If, I, I don't miss it. I don't miss it anymore. 
I, I have my routine of YouTube and you know yeah. <laughs> Twitter and what I do on my on my phone. So absolutely, I, I'm 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 fine with it not coming back. So yeah, so bro, what, what do you have on on tap for the a senseless fuck podcast this week, my brother? Oh, hey man, you know we got to talk about got to talk about Boosie, man, Lil Boosie, and that he revealed, you know, I'm sure, Boss, you already, you're familiar with the story, man, mm-hmm. about him, you know, supplying his uh, young son, I think it was his son and nephew or something like that, and they're, they're only about 12, 13 years old, that's supplying them with prostitutes, man. You know, so we got to talk about that, you know, as well, because to me, it seemed like that's, that's some, you know, Police man to get involved in that situation, man. Yeah, that's you a know? charge waiting to happen. That's a charge, right. You know, so we're going to talk about that, man. And, and man, you know, of course, I talk about coronavirus updates, man, and Dr. Fauci and everything going on on that end. And, and, and also, you know, we got to show some love to the 2020 graduates also, man. You know, all my 2020 high school, college graduates, you know, we're going to show them some love also, man, on the show. No doubt, folks. Check out J- JC's show, Just Was Fuck Podcast, on YouTube and Facebook, where you can see him and his crew every week. Folks, we're going to take a break. Coming back with the Boss Report, J.C. Smith, a special edition of it, because Bone's out sick this week. So stick around, folks. Boss Report, out for the break. For all your photo, video, and voiceover needs, check out the fine folks at Blu-ray Productions. They will take good care of you. If you don't believe me, you can see for yourself. Check out their work at blueberryproductions.tv, the Facebook page, Blueberry Productions, also a Vimeo page, a YouTube page, and it's Blueberry, B-L-U-B-E-R-R-Y, Prod on Twitter. Check them out today. Blueberry Productions, great people, great work, great service. Hey there. Your yard took a real beating this summer. Luckily, Scott's Turf Builder Winter Guard has your back. Just feed your grass with Scott's again this fall when the air is cool and the soil is warm. It's the perfect time to give your lawn a boost. If you do, Winter Guard will give your yard the nourishment it needs to help weak, thin grass recover and support root growth, giving you a greener, more resilient lawn both now and next spring. Guaranteed. Grab a bag of Scott's Turf Builder Winter Guard today. You'll be back to barbecuing in no time. This is a Scott's Yard. Hey parents, we all try to be extra careful with our children in the car, but then we get an important call or text. Remember, our children are watching. Make every drive a good example. Be in the zone. Turn off your phone. Visit childrenshospital.vanderbilt.org slash B-I-T-Z to learn more about our teen driver safety program. Brought to you by Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt, the Ford Motor Company Fund, and the Allstate Foundation. Hello, my name is Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Once again, www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach T Wheel 24 or Instagram Travis L. Williams 24. Or you can call me at 404 542 607. Once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Bossman Radio Show covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you. Hip-hop fans, I got a great album for you. The debut album from Family Grind ENT, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip-hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, illstreetrex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody. Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today. True Speech, and 313 Fresh, Family Grind, ENT. Believe in it, get it. 
A gorgeous tan from Suntan City gives you an inner glow that relights the fire when you run into your first crush. Vicky, who is that? An old boyfriend. Lucky you just tanned at Suntan City. Lucky he's single. We're doing lunch tomorrow. Won't be single for long then. During Tour of the City, try all five tans, including spray tan, for just $4.99. Restrictions may apply. Click to buy now. When you're a teen, you finally get to make some of your own decisions. Who are you going to hang out with? What do you want to be? Are you going to glance at that text while driving? Remember, a split second is all it takes for something tragic to happen. Be in the zone. Turn off your phone. Visit childrenshospital.vanderbilt.org slash B-I-T-Z to learn more about our teen driver safety program. Brought to you by the Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt, the Ford Motor Company Fund, and the Allstate Foundation. It's maybe the night that my dreams might let me know All the stars are closer, all the stars are closer Tell me what you gonna do to me Confrontation ain't nothing new to me You could bring a bullet, bring a sword, bring a morgue But you can't bring the truth to me Alexa, play Kendrick Lamar and SZA Okay Maybe the night that my dreams might let me know All the stars are closer With Amazon Music, a voice is all you need Get tens of millions of songs. Download the Amazon Music app today. Yeah, yeah, it's your man, JC, the host with the most, baby. And it goes down each and every Saturday night right here in the city of Memphis. That's right, y'all. It goes down at Clicks Sports Bar Memphis, baby. 3705 Malco Way, Memphis, Tennessee, 38125. Come out and join us, the Three Kings, each and every Saturday night for the liveest karaoke in the city. Everybody gets in free till 10 p.m., only $5 after. Great food. We got drink specials. We got all kind of games, man. We got the pool tables popping. Whatever you want, we got you, man. Come on out. Have a good time with us each and every Saturday night. That's Clicks Sports Bar, Memphis. All right, folks, back here in the Boss Man Show, having the Boss Report with my man, J.C. Smith. Bruh, it's been a while for you, man. <laughs> you sure remember how it goes? <laughs> Damn, I, I haven't done a boss before in a minute, man. <laughs> it ain't changed too much, bro. It ain't changed too much. It's still crazy, man. It's still crazy. <laughs> man, let's go. Let's get it. Let's get it. All right. Folks, you've been waiting on it. It's time for it. It's here. It's the boss report. All right, bro. First story, the sad story. UK rail worker dies from coronavirus after being spit on by a passenger upset at her for telling him to pay the right fee. He's still at large. This happened over in the UK? Yep. Oh, that's, that's wild, man. Like, I mean, it's a sign of times, bro. You know, you just, you know, have to pray up and, and yeah, if people can, you know, really, you know, do that to you and your life be over with just like that, man. It's a sad time. I hope they do uh, catch that guy, man. And also, man, this is this is what we talked about with African Americans not getting into our health care with this virus. What's the story right here? It put him out right here, JC. Chicago mom tests positive for COVID nineteen during childbirth. Down about the hospital sends her home. Wow. Woo. Uh, you like say, I'm, I, there's so many stories out there, boss. But the, yeah, that one, that's a tough one right there, man. Stuff when you know, especially you know, the way that this virus has affected you know us as a, as a people, as a community, you know, um, sad, bro. Like, like what what words can you even you know say to to try to you know describe or, or you know justify what you know, what took place, man? Yeah, that's that's cold, man. It's cold world, bro. Exactly. A little bit more lighter note. Pluto Energy. Rich the key at scoops. Takashi six nine baby mama. In a Lambo landed him praise from Toxic King Future. <laughs> Wait, who is this? Bitch the kid. Oh. He scooped because she's not a baby mama in a Lambo and, and Future praised him for it. Yo. Uh, I, you know what? I you know, I miss some rich kids music, man, but what but switch the gears, man. What what's your thoughts if you got Takashi, man? Like, you know, him getting out him snitching on everybody. Do you think something's gonna happen to him? Yes. Yeah. Every dog has his day. 
Me too. I think some of them good dudes. When, 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 you, when you read out, when you read out people like that, they they yeah. it's, just, it's, just, it's just a matter of when and where. <laughs> that's that's all. No doubt. No, definitely. And we got this. Um, <laughs> KWA out of pocket maskless Karen attacks Red Lobster workers on Mother's Day. Cheddar biscuit Twitter attacks. <laughs> man, this is why I was about the ball the ball before, man. There's so it's so many layers to your to these stories, man. <laughs> so we got so let's break it down. <laughs> so we got um, Red Lobster. Yes. Uh, out of pocket <laughs> Yes. And out of pocket Masters Karen going crazy on on some on workers. Claim what she wanted a table. On Mother's Day. So and, she was throwing the biscuit? Yes. Wow. Karen out here wilding, man. <laughs> yes. That's crazy, man. And the tough biscuits, they good when they hot, man. Yeah, but yeah, Karen wilding, man. Man, what you said. Get this. Hackers threaten to leak personal information about LeBron James, Drake, Lady Gaga, and Elton John, and more or less... Alan Grubman's PR firm pays $21 million. Man, is there another Takashi situation going on here? I think so, bro. Wow. Wow, man. $21 million, though? $21 million to keep him quiet. Hey, man. I don't know about that, dog. You know what I'm saying? I'm with how are we supposed to stop, stop snitching, man? Quit snitching. Exactly. Just just stop snitching, please. Please. And get this. Dusty Daddy. Boosie Badass Bragg saying, quote, Ain't nothing wrong with getting my nephews and sons some professional mouth work. They my sons and my nephews. That's what he said, bro. In response to criticism. All right, so, yeah, man, you know, the whole black, you know, community, everybody has been chiming in on this uh, topic. I think Boosie, man, sometimes, sometimes you just best serve, just shut up, man. Don't say nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you were, you know, you were talking about D-Wade and his son and the controversy behind that. But with, with, if it's stemming from your own family, sometimes you got to think before you put stuff out there, man, like... Boosie's has opened himself up to possible charges. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? You know, it, it's like the real, like, it's some real stuff here, man. He could be open, like, I understand what he's trying to do. But at that age, you, you don't do that, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, now, if, if, if his son and nephew, I say, what, 16, 18, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and you see they show a strong interest in, in, in girls and you know, and, and trying to get girls. Yeah, at that point, you know, if you want to do a little something like that within the within the confines, the comfort of your own home, then okay, that's fine. But yeah, but don't don't you don't broadcast that. And also, they're too young at that point to be trying to do all. They don't, they don't know what the hell is going on or what they doing. Exactly, he doing the most. This is yeah. this is where being to keep being too real goes wrong. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, man. He's opening himself up to all kind of, you know, child, child services now to get involved something like that, man. Most definitely. Yeah, this story, bro, slipping, falling, can't get up. Sadly, state of New York says DMX owes nearly $200,000 in back taxes. DMX owes, owes 200000 200, in back taxes? Yes. Man. Man, I was I, I loved Ed growing up, and I, I, I always wish that Ed would have kind of gone a different route. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think Ed is always too street or too hood for his own good. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. where if Ed would have gone a JG route? You know what I'm saying? Maybe not be a mogul and all that, but, you know, the type of rapper that people look at, like, like people look at Snoop. You know how, how Snoop is revered and loved? Mm-hmm. Like I think X X could have gone that same route, especially you know, you know he because he was very you know religious and everything. Like X could have gone X could have gone like Mace, the Mace route, and became a pastor, and 
you know, could have uh, had himself a whole different, you know, fan base, man, as opposed to sticking to the streets, or, uh, sticking to what he knows. I think that that definitely has, you know, served against him over the years in the numerous trips to jail and rehab. And, you know what I'm saying? And X was a pretty good actor. He had a decent movie career going, man. He did, and he you know, but yeah, you know. So this is just another story, you know. You know, in, in the uh, in the life of DMX, man, where it just seemed like he just can't, like you said, slipping and falling, and just can't find a way to stay out of trouble, man. To stay out, to stay out of the news. No, no, definitely. What the hell, news? Shannon Brown arrested, charged with firing a rifle, and two strangers trying to enter his Fayetteville, Georgia home. Okay. Funny you should bring this up. Me and my friend, um, she sent me the story earlier, and we were debating, debating it, right? Because she loves to go back and forth with me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so she sent me the story, and she was trying to defend Shannon Brown and the fact of him, you know, having the gun shoot, you know, I guess what warning shots are. I don't know if he decided directly at the folks, but I was more so looking at it from the, the couple's perspective. Okay. Now, what they should have done, boss, they should have called their realtor to go ahead and schedule a time to come see the house. That was the house they wanted to look at. In my mind, I'm figuring they probably just go out for a little drive in the area and possibly looking for homes to, to purchase, to buy. You know, but and they saw Shannon's house and they saw the Patel sign, saw the door open. I'm assuming this couple is probably white because black a black couple is not going to do this. Not <laughs> um, in Fayetteville, yeah. Georgia. Yeah, it was white. Yeah, so yeah, I'm assuming that's what was going on. And they, and they thought, you know, it'd be all good. And then what should have happened in my mind at that point in time when they walk in and Shannon Brown comes down and sees, you know, these folks in his house. There's still been some dialogue going on at that point. Like, hey, what are you guys doing here? Hey, oh, we're sorry. We're looking at a house. Well, the house is not, you know, it's not open to view right now. Oh, sorry. You know, and, and that's it. How did it escalate from just coming to the house and gunshot? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, how did we get there? They were, they were wrong, you know, for trespassing. Because that's, that's still trespassing. But Shannon Brown, you know, he went too far. With the, with the shot to take an excessive force, you know, you, you can make a claim for. And I, I was surprised, boss, that he served two days in jail for that. I thought I thought it could possibly be longer than two days, man, honestly. We still got some charges. He's, 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 yeah. you know, it happened on the weekend, so it, it wasn't no court. He had to wait till Monday. There you go. There so it is. That's kind of what that was. It's kind of tricky. When you do something on Friday night, you might not see a judge till Monday. <laughs> Or we do exactly. something on Saturday night, but I see a judge to Monday. So you don't be, he, he don't get you for a day automatically. Right. So it's one of those situations. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, Hello. man. Missed. Right in the backyard here, too. We got this. Nice. this, this here goes some layers for you. Guns, orgies, fuck you mean. Worldly love. Lover Earl Thomas shows off diamond encrusted chain he was gifted by blinging, blaming better half for his birthday, despite cheating, cheating scandal. What about that, bro? Yeah, the, you talking che- about that's yeah. a, a boss man story written all over right there, man. I'm about to pour it all day. Now, you know, I'm a big Texas guy, so you know, got much love for Earl Thomas, man, but I, I don't understand this, man. Okay. Now, this is probably not the first time him and this girl had these issues. He's probably been doing his thing for a minute. But my thing is, you a big-time, all-pro, NFL safety. Like, you or your team should know the ins and outs of using Snapchat. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a way, a ghost account, where you can not, you know what I'm saying, be detected or, you know, traced or anything like that to where his wife couldn't have found him. And then... Okay, you and your brother, you know, it's your brother and everything, so you doing dirt or whatever, you know, your brother got your back, that's cool. Well, y'all in the same bed, though, bro? Like, no, nah, hey, hey, my little brother, man, we doing some dirt. Hey, fam, you gotta go to the other room, bro. I ain't trying to... Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's not like a bad porno on Pornhub or something, man. 
Yeah, like, I ain't trying to see. I mean, you, you my guy. We're going to end it up. I'm, I'm going to do my thing. You do your thing. I'm going to get out of there, okay? Yeah, y'all rented the Airbnb, so I'm sure it's plenty of room. With, you know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't like, like y'all only had that one room to, to be in. Y'all probably have, about like, three or four different rooms y'all could have gone to. Like, okay, hey, bro, I got three girls right here. You take your three in the next room. Bam, we do what we do. You know what I'm saying? But nah, man, uh-uh. There's only one floor. <laughs> only one floor that is gonna be gonna be visible around here, man. Yeah. That, yeah, that that whole story is very like boss reporters right here. This one right here is gonna yeah. throw you off too. It's very much boss reporters story here. Swiper, no swiping. New York nurse steals dying coronavirus patients' credit card to buy gas and groceries in the amount of hundred dollars. Wow, for a hundred dollars, man, you're gonna basically throw away your career and go to jail. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's crazy, man. For a hundred dollars, though, bro. Mm-hmm. Man, folks don't, folks don't, they don't see the big picture, man. Like, I mean, you gonna you gonna wild out. We let it be for like thousands of dollars, something like that. Don't wild out for a hundred dollars, man. That's not not smart, man. Yes, indeed. And the final story: is state of Florida, bro. You are gonna, of course, it's Florida. <laughs> A uh, Florida man arrested after getting caught drinking off his Johnson to give a female a facial at a Florida picnic park bench. Damn. Yep. Has Florida written all over. Uh, <laughs> literally has Florida written all over. <laughs> literally, man. Um, so, yeah, man. Um, <laughs> basically, so this, this story here. So my man, he's at the part, right? He doesn't know. He doesn't know his woman. And he's just he like fling it. He fling it on her, like. No, nah, she was ready to catch it. But what was good is that the cops let him finish up for they arrested them both. Oh, so wait a minute. She was in those. They were. They were together. Yeah, she was sitting on the park bench. He's just over top of her, standing, you know, oh. whacking the, the finish, the finish, the finish it off to give it to her. And <laughs> the cops pretty much videotaped him. And uh, yeah, this was got on both, and on they, and she had the uh, look of of a point hub finishing move. It was just all everywhere. Oh, yo, yo. Fake eyes, no, it was everywhere. And he's doing the ha 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 ha. Right, right. <laughs> You like what you like, do what you do, but you can't do it all out in public, man. Come on, now. Even in Florida, you can't do it like that in Florida. Even in Florida, you can't get away with that. Even in Florida, you have to have some type of discretion now. <laughs> so, bro, I know it's been a while since did the ball support, bro. What is your take on today's report, man? There's a lot of nasty, freaky, <laughs> just cold-blooded people in this world, man. Like, come on, people, let's... Let's do better, man. That's all, I, that's all I can say about the people in this ball support. We got to do better. Look at people. We got to do better. And, bro, it's been a while, but it ain't changed. It's still, still the same, ain't it? Still the same, man. Like, ride the bike. <laughs> yes, indeed. Folks, at the ball support. Me and JC did it for you. Vaughn will be back next week. Folks, check us out. Bossmanshow.com for all old statements, interviews. Folks, be good. We out. And if you don't know, now you know, you know.